Barry Lyndon is a stylish 1975 British period drama directed by Stanley Kubrick, who also wrote the script based on the 1844 novel by William Makepeace Thackeray called The Luck of Barry Lyndon. At the 48th Academy Awards, it won four awards for art direction, cinematography, costume design, and musical score. The British Academy of Film and Television Arts gave Kubrick its Best Director Award. Though often left out of the conversations among seminal works such as 2001 A Space Odyssey, A Clockwork Orange, or Full Metal Jacket, Barry Lyndon is given its running time of 3 hours and 11 minutes, probably his best film in terms of overall entertainment, including a great deal of humor to go along with everything else. The film follows the rise and fall of an ambitious Irish commoner named Redmond Barry who sets out in the world to make a name for himself after being dumped by his beautiful cousin for an officer of the military. The film is told in two parts. The first half of the film follows Barry from his humble beginnings as a naive, innocent man who fights for love, honor, and country. A man who gains respect and admiration everywhere he goes, from challenging an English army captain for the hand of a woman to signing up to fight in the Seven Years' War against the French to standing up to a much bigger man to saving the life of his captor. Through all of these, Redmond Barry makes a name for himself. The second half of the film follows a pivotal point of the film where Barry, to escape the Austrian government using him as a spy, takes on the disguise of someone else to start a new life as a professional gambler in Saxony and sets his sights on the wife of an earl named Charles Linden. At this point of the film, Barry's methods for acquiring a name for himself become dishonorable. Openly courting Mr. Linden's wife and upon the husband's death, marrying her and assuming her dead husband's last name. Having open affairs with all of the maids on the, on the estate, flogging her son Bullingdon Linden, who hates him with a passion, squandering the estate's wealth on worthless works of art, etc. In other words, everything he did to earn honor of his original name, he squanders to counterfeit a name stolen from another man. A barrister with influence promises Barry peerage or a proper title for the king from the king in exchange for Barry's friendship, which involves mingling with the proper people, attending parties and giving ill-advised loans to others of high rank in society. What he once fought for, he now resorts to paying for with disastrous results. Here is more on the key themes in this film. Throughout the film, Barry takes on a number of false identities, most of which occur in the film's second act, when doing so precedes him taking the name of Lyndon. Along with the false identities are a number of clues that he will assume another man's wife and name. For instance, Barry takes the name of an officer named Fakeham, whose horse, uniform, and papers he's stolen. Barry has a brief love affair with a woman whose husband is away fighting in the war, assuming the property and wife of this officer foreshadows him stealing the property and wife of Earl Charles Linden, taking on the identity of the Chevalier Balibari, Barry assuming the false identity of Laszlo Zelagi, an agent of the Prussian army. Another foreshadowing of Barry's name change and his methods for gaining respect is him going in the wrong direction. After deserting the British Army, he steals a horse to go to Holland, a neutral region of the Seven Years' War. On the way there, he is stopped by a Prussian captain and lies about who he is and where he's headed, telling the captain he's headed to Bremen. 
Captain Potsdorf informs Barry under the name of Facam that he's going in the wrong direction and offers to point him in the right direction with a correct map. Barry's lie is eventually found out, but the point is that by first deserting his army, then stealing another's another soldier's name and horse, Barry is beginning to go in the wrong direction, even though following this episode, he continues to do honorable things such as saving the life of his captor, Captain Potsdorf. Also key to this turning point in the story is Holland being a neutral zone or a midpoint in Barry's transition away from the honorable acts defining him in the story's first half. Still, another foreshadowing of Barry's turning away from honorable methods is him being a deserter, not just in the military sense of the word, but also in the figurative sense in that he gives up his own name for the name Facam. The point of no return occurs in the scene where he fools his captors by disguising himself as Chevalier Balibari fooling them into not only setting him free to leave Austria, but also re receiving from them 2,000 guineas for doing so. In the beginning, he tries to earn his name, but in the second half of the movie, he tries to buy his name or peerage. challenging John Quinn to a gun duel over Nora Brady and in doing so earning the respect, admiration, and friendship of Jack Grogan, winning the boxing match against a bully in his regiment, saving Potsdorf's life at the French fort. As a spy for the enemy, he refused to sell out a fellow Irishman. marrying the countess only a year after her husband's death, sleeping with the maids, gambling, drinking, running up bills. Instead of earning a good name by honorable deeds, he sets out to buy a name, beating Bullingdon in front of all of the important people. And the turning point in the film, in Barry's reputation, that is, comes when he gives up a good name he earned honestly to steal the name of another man. Thank you for watching this video of my interpretation of Stanley Kubrick's film, Barry Lyndon. Uh, I really appreciate you taking the time out to check out this video and don't forget to leave a like or a comment and I will see you next time.